So this video is going to discuss cell potential and how it relates to spontaneity. So recall that cell potential is E0 of the cell. And if you want to review a video on how to calculate the E0 of a cell, there is a video on that because this is going to be one of the um, factors um, that you're going to insert into this uh, equation in order to solve um, to determine spontaneity. So we do need to know a little about a little something about E0 of the cell. In addition, once you do know the E0 of the cell, you should familiarize yourself with these two equations. They're the same equation, one just uses the log of 10 and one uses the natural log. And either one will give you the same answer. It is just a personal preference of what you choose to use. Obviously note that our constant up here, the 0 0.0592 volts versus the 0 0.0257 volts is slightly different. This is the one that I'm going to be using. It's uh, seen slightly more often, the natural log version, but either one, again, um, will render the same uh, response. So, a quick throwback, though, what we're really trying to do is compare spontaneity to um, our E0 of the cell, our cell potential. And if you recall, G0, which is standard free energy, can relate somehow to K, which we know is an equilibrium constant, and that can also relate to E0 of the cell using these three equations, where delta G tells us something about K, and K can tell us something about E0. So, very briefly, let's go through this table here before we solve our problem. So we have E0 of the cell, we have K, and we have delta G of the reaction, and then what equals, uh, what equilibrium favors. So we know just from the basics, the basics of equilibrium that a K of greater than one will favor products, a K of less than one will favor reactants, and a K that is equal to one will favor both reactants and products equally. The corresponding values for the E0 of the cell are that the K that is greater than one will always be positive, and a K of less than one will correspond to a negative E0 of the cell. An E0 of the cell will have opposite signs to delta G. So if you have a positive E0 of the cell, you will have a negative delta G. If you have a negative E0 of the cell, you will have a positive delta G. And again, we want to relate that to the middle column. So let's take a quick look here in terms of what our problem is. It is asking us to calculate the equilibrium constant K for the reaction that uses magnesium and copper. So we are given a hint that we should calculate the standard EMF of that. So we have actually calculated standard EMF of this particular cell before. There is a video on that where we calculated E0 of the cell, which was E0 of the cathode minus E0 of the anode and we determined that the cathode was indeed our copper and the anode was indeed our magnesium. And so we got a value of E0 that was E for copper minus E for the magnesium and that was 0.34 minus a negative 2.37 which gave us 2.71 volts. So if you want a detailed description of uh, or an explanation of that there is a video on calculating standard cell EMF. But essentially we got these values out of the standard reduction potentials reference table. You can find that in any textbook or um, uh, appendices of a, of a chemistry book and we just simply plugged in the negative point three, uh, the positive point three four uh, value for copper and we plugged in the negative two point three seven value for magnesium a negative minus a negative was a positive and so we added the two values together. We knew that the uh, copper had to be the reduced value and the uh, magnesium had to be the oxidized value and so that is how, um, and we knew that of course from the cell potential. So that is how we attained the 2.71 volts. 
by knowing that the copper was reduced, making it the cathode, the magnesium was oxidized, making it the anode, and then we just plugged in those values using the trend that the more positive the E naught value that was the copper, the more likely it is to be reduced. So that's how we figured out what was oxidized and reduced by using that little trend. The more positive the E naught, the more likely you are to be reduced. And for us in this example, that was copper. And if copper was reduced, magnesium was oxidized. So copper was the cathode, magnesium was the anode, and there you have it. So we have our E naught of the cell. So I'm going to take this equation here and say if E naught of the cell is 2.71 volts, that should equal 0 0.0257 volts over N. N is the number of electrons. And in this case, it is from 0 to 2 plus, from 0 to 2 plus, the exchange is of two electrons. And then ln of K. So again, either equation works. They both use N. These, you're just using a different value as a constant up here and a different logarithmic value. So 2.71 is equal to 0 0.0257 volts divided by N, the number of electrons, which is 2. And that is times the ln of K. So let's take a quick look at what is happening down here. Let's see if we can figure out what is happening. We have a positive E naught value for the cell, which means that our K value that we attain should definitely be greater than 1, which means that our products should be favored and that will be a spontaneous reaction because the delta G will be negative. Spontaneous for the forward direction because products are favored. So we do have a positive E naught. Let's see if, according to this table, we do attain a K value that is indeed greater than positive 1. And if it is, we know we're doing the problem correctly. We'll know that our products are favored. We'll know that that is going to render a delta G that is going to be a negative value. And that will tell us that we are spontaneous going forward to favor our products. So let's take a look. Let's simplify this equation out. 2.71 equals, this will be point. 0, 1, 2, 8, 5. When you divide 0 0.0257 by 2, that'll be times ln of k. Let us then divide 2.71 by 0 0.01285, and that will give us a value of 210.9 equals ln of k. Let's take the inverse of this natural law to give us k, and that will give us e to the power of 210.9. Plug that into your calculator and K should give us a whopping value of 3.9 times 10 to the 91st power. Wow, that is big. That's definitely greater than 1. So we were correct that our K value was greater than 1. That would mean that the products are favored. That would mean that our delta G value would be negative, and we are favoring our products. So should we have been asked if this reaction would occur spontaneously, we would say yes in the forward direction, because the delta G of the reaction sign would be negative. The K would be greater than 1, meaning our equilibrium favored the products. And of course, our K value that we were asked to calculate, the simplest answer of all, K is equal to 3.9 times 10 to the 90 first power, there are no units as K is a unitless value.